they're pretty self-explanatory. Can't really mess with them too much. Don't push the test buttons. Um, they will start the generator and they'll actually transfer over. If you're not ready for a transfer, if you're asking for trouble, you'll be calling me and I'll be charging you. Um, if there is a problem with their switch, each and everybody here shall have a card with my name, number on it, or office number on it. It's 24 hour hotline. Calls. Because I don't want anybody getting in there. It's hurt. It is live voltage. There are some covers and protectors in there. But if you don't know where to look for and what you're messing with, don't touch it. Um, you can call me on the phone. Can I just interject that we have a one year service plan? Yeah. So when we. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, we are on a one year maintenance agreement. We will be checking the switches with somebody here for the most part um, to actually transfer them and, and bring them back to normal power. Um, once again, if, if there's something wrong with the switch, my card will be here on site. Call me, it's 24 hour a day. Um, I'll be asking you what to look for on the main screen and what buttons to push at that time. That'll give me an idea of whether I'm supposed to be coming out or my superiors will be coming out to fix whatever problem's going on. Or if it's something that I can address over the phone and then come out on a regular power. Um, once again, don't go in them. They're live voltage. It's the same as an open bus. You'll run into problems. But there are certain things that I can have you do with the control panel that'll let me and my superior people know what's going on with this site and how fast we're going to get to your site. So usually within about 45 minutes we're here. So, any questions on switch gear? As to what they do? I had a question on the test switch. Does it refer back to the grid timed out or does it stay there? Well, what it does is it'll, it'll prompt you. You push it and it'll start commencing a test. It'll ask you to push it again to actually start things up transfer or not. And it'll tell you to push it again to buy it'll be like a bypass. You'll see little lines on it and they'll come up on the screen. They're, they're pretty self-explanatory as far as the switch the, the face goes. Um, they'll also bring up uh, trouble codes, not codes but uh, verbal warnings as to why or something went wrong. Uh, failed to transfer um, or failed to acquire standby, failed to acquire uh, commercial power, stuff like that. And those are the questions that I'll be asking on the phone with you at that point. Let me know, get my, my head in gear as to what I'm going to go ahead and address. As far as the generator uh, stuff here, is any of that going to be in HMI or before? Yes. You should be able to see, yeah, what the generator is doing. If that generator kicks on, it'll say, okay, in backup, you know, so you can generate power. Oh. Yeah, my the, you know the connection. Okay. Not there's directly. It, it'll be verbed, I believe, as EPS supplying load. And okay. Then you'll also have you probably have things such as uh, on your end of it, um, more position to transfer material. I'll look at the map for time on that. In fact, uh, within ten seconds. Ten seconds of an outage. All right. Here, if you have pops running. We've had a problem with 700 before. Oh, that was 700. It's a uh, DC bus that ran all the way, and it'll fail on those DC voltage. And then somebody out there can come to this and come out and reset them. A lot of times I've seen that in the past, too. Same applies with elevator switches and air conditioning. So is that um, going to happen here on these? I'm not sure. I don't know. We, what, uh, what did we run across the other day when we were here? We that that was yeah. because we got two uh, breakers, two, two pole breakers in the three-phase panel. They're side yeah. by side. So this ATS over here is seeing the phase difference. Yeah. Even though you're using only single phase, it's saying I'm not going to switch you to a competing uh, or a, an offsetting or out of phase load. Right. So it holds. It doesn't does transfer. So we actually ran the UPS battery down on the, on the standby. It wouldn't transfer over to the generator power. So that was a good test. I've already alerted yeah. folks to get that. It's just a matter of switching that breaker down. One set, so it's both on A, B, or whatever. But that won't prevent the 700 failing. No, what happens here? The 
the system's designed, the UPS picks up all your controls, all your power for your PLC and the control sections. <coughs> you have intelligence up at all times. The motor power, though, isn't available until the generator actually files, right. fires up right. and kicks in. So we, have, we have failures on both DC buses. Because the DC bus is draining down as you know before the power comes back up, and then power comes back up and sees both DC bus voltage and trips. That we have a problem our before a lot. Yeah, we'll physically around and, and reset. reset that. Yeah. It's possible. Because what these guys will say see is a fault, they don't know what caused it. Right. So what I'm saying so is have longer than ten seconds. Like right. the problem, we have it running. Okay, we do that at center, bam, generator starts up, but we, we still don't have, have a pump. But we don't have still don't have any pumps. Oh we have the power here. This is uh, as we go on continue the testing, this is what's gonna be rung out yeah. on your on your full blown uh, automated testing. And that's that's what we need to we're good, we're addressing that right. right. We'll pump the people we'll on a full blown test, we'll pump actually be running when we do that one. Yes. Yeah. In fact we did go. And we had them running. Yeah. Last week, just to check to see that it did. It carried the world right away. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll demonstrate that today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, what I what I saw last week was the uh, you wouldn't see commercial power. The transfer switch picked up emergency, but it wouldn't pick re pick up commercial because I guess it's fed with the two brakes. Okay. But that's something I don't know yeah, about your UPS systems. Um, as far as what transfer switches do, do anybody have? Questions? Does anybody have what they do as far as seeing commercial power, time delays, how long you're going to expect to see things running? What's that? that what, once it sees that, it's in what? 30 minutes before it retransfers to commercial power. Okay. It's looking for clean power. Um, once it sees it, for 30 minutes it transfers back. The generator will stay running for another five minutes to cool it off. And then it'll be right back into automatic again. Uh, as far as with that size of tank, probably about 40 minutes. Four days. Four days. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's uh, 500 gallons or 420 gallons at 90 percent. Why 30 minutes? Because that's what it's done. We can reprogram that, but 30 minutes is good because if uh, a line ends up working on a pole or something. Um, and he puts in a, a new uh, fuse. What if, the, what if he's got another problem um, down the road? The fuse blows in two minutes. And then you're just restarting and retransferring and redoing all that stuff. They're, they're giving a, a good window to see clean power. Is that an issue for you, Greg? Would, you, would it be better to have it than 15? I'll, so I'll, I'll ask. I don't know because I, I don't know whether we want to standardize it with the other generators in the agency. And I, I don't know with, with letting it run for 30 minutes like that is an AQMD issue either. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what it's not in an emergency situation. Oh. Usually we're anywhere like 5 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Mostly the, the run time permitting is for maintenance and repair. The off any other emergency time, it could run for a week, two weeks, three weeks, depending on uh, how long the power's going to be done. So they usually got documented on the run log. Any other questions about switch gear? In here. Is there a manual bypass on the ADF? There is a bypass button. Once commercial power is restored, you can bypass that 30 minutes by pushing the button. It'll bypass it. I meant if, it, if for some reason they will transfer automatically to my There is. Generator money has been There is. And I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i open up two, one, one of each switch. I'll show each one. We'll just combine it. I'll show you where that position is and where the bar is. How to do it. Once the generator, um, so the transfer switch is a sense that there is no longer Edison power available, how long does the generator wait before it's, well, I guess it'll start quickly. How long before it transfers the load and picks up the station? 10 seconds. The BFDs are actually do pick up the motors while they're spinning, picks up right from there. So the good it chance it still has a head on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. When it's seven seconds, seconds. yeah. Next question. Anybody? 
you guys, let me open up a switch over here, and then I'll open up a small switch and show you on, on how to manually transfer them. You, doing so, you want to make sure that the generator's off, commercial power breaker is open. You don't want to have anything coming in, you want to switch it cold, and then turn on your commercial power or your generator, either one. Yeah. What was the requirements for protection and stuff? Yeah. Don't reach in here without gloves and without safety gear. Yeah. Um, this is the manual switch rod. It engages in this hole or in this hole. Unlock one, unlock the second one. So you'll have everybody come, come through here one at a time. I'm just putting this on the camera. So that's where this goes. In here. Or in here. Push it in. Push it down the source that you're looking for. Right. Make sure the power is off. Yeah. It's stored. Very good? Okay. Let me show you where it's at on the other small switch. It's there. It's marked normal and emergency. And you just make sure the power goes. Click. Pull the right rod out. Same with the other switch. Any other questions on this stuff? If you do have an issue with you wanting to reprogram something, and you have your book with you, call me on the phone and walk you through it. <coughs> These are the goal. They've gone through a lot of innovative things to get them to pass the tier levels that they're wanting here. It's made in Sweden, shipped over here, and they made it up with a Kohler generator on the back end of it. Um, Basic stuff to know is these are your fuel, fuel filters, primary and secondary filters. Um, one of them does have a water sensor on it, which will you'll probably never ever see it trip because the fuel is there's so little of it and it gets pumped so fast that it's gonna burn right through it. Um, if you see leaks coming out of here, um, you can try tightening them up. If they don't tighten up and seal. Call me, I'll run over here with a filter. Put your filter on. Um, Climber pump. On this. There is no bleeder valve. It has a check ball in there. You just push down on this little kick cushion and it pops up. Pump it about 20 times. Hit the button. If it doesn't do it that time, pump it again. 10 times out of 10, 10, times out of 10 they fight. These are really reliable. It has a basic alternator, just like a car, so that when it's running, it's charging the battery, since your commercial power won't be feeding the battery charger. Yeah. Oil fill is right here, red cap. Right there. And your coolant is visual, so you can see through it through the, the bypass hose or the bypass tank. Um, if that doesn't have coolant in it, and there's coolant on the ground, we've got a leak. Call me. You know, call our company. Uh, somebody come out. Um, on the other side of the unit is the oil drain, in case you had to drain the oil. Uh, you know, down the road some year, you're going to be doing oil changes. I'll show you that stuff in a few minutes. Muffler is enclosed inside the unit. That's why it's pretty quiet when it's running with the doors closed. You can hardly hear it. Air filters back here. It's pretty simple to change them. It's just pop clips. Can everybody take a look? I'll pop one open. You can see how basic stuff you've probably all seen this before somewhere yeah um fuel level or fuel fill is on the other side let's all go to the other side we'll get that stuff and then we'll go and an oil drain plug that's for ease of getting into the thing you can hook up a hose and a pump pump it out pump it in there's also valves on each respective unit there's a, a turn off valve block heater for this is this unit right here Okay, just behind the frame rail. The box on top of it is its controller. It uh, uh, uses a thermal uh, switch to activate the contactor. It turns on the element. There's no pump. It's just done by heat. Pumps it through the or flows it through the engine by expansion. It has a coolant filter right here. It's all painted. You can't see it. There is a shutoff valve for it. Yeah. Change it. Oil filters are located in the filter block. Three of them, one, two, and three. They're 
painted right now, you can't really see it. Uh, okay, two batteries, 24 volt system. We're gonna get it right here, real simple. Uh, your battery charger is mounted on the cabinet back here. It does have an AC fuse for incoming and a DC fuse going out to the charger itself with two different uh, amp meter and a DC voltage meter. And your fuel, your fuel fill is right here inside this door with just a standard cap with a gauge next to it. Now for the good stuff. Go up to the controller and I can show you guys how to start it, run it, stop it. And on this controller, there is a digital panel. If there's a problem with the generator, it will come up digitally. It will not be a code. You have to decide. It will actually say what's going on. So it's pretty simple. Call me on the phone. This is what it's saying. I tell you which buttons to push to try to rectify that situation. If you can't then get that to that point and it doesn't work, I roll out. Full panel. It basically will tell you if something's wrong. It will also operate it manually from this point. This is your on-off switch. It's also your reset switch in case there's an emergency that has to be reset. Such as that. You notice that it comes up here as emergency stop. 